Hello. So I'm going to share with you something the Lord has been revealing to me. It's basically about having conversations with God and what those conversations entail or how simple it is, you know. Now it's just, prayer is just a conversation with the Lord and how beautiful and pure that is and how through that the Lord has created such a desire for me to spend more time in prayer because that's such an important thing actually. And so I'm going to um, share a story of Moses and a couple of guys and through that we're going to read Genesis 1 up until 2 verse 1 as if it were the Lord himself in conversation speaking to us, telling us the account of creation. And so the Lord would speak it with a compassionate tone, I believe. He would speak it with loving tone. You know, it wouldn't be this authoritative God in heaven. And so he would say, In the beginning I created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and my spirit moved over the face of the waters. And I said, Let there be light. And there was light. And I saw the light that it was good, and I divided the light from darkness. And I called the light day, and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And then I said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And I made that firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above it, and it was so. And I called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And I said, let the waters under heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And I said, let, and I called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters seas, and I saw that it was good. And I said, let the earth bring forth grass, her yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and her yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And I saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. And I said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And I made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser night light to rule the night. And I made the stars also. And I set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And I saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And then I said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly it above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And I created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And I saw that it was good. And I blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowls multiply in the earth. In the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And then I said, let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And I made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And I saw that it was good. And then I said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so I made man in my own image. In the image of in my image I created him. And male and female I created them. And I blessed them, and I said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. And I said, Behold, I have given to you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given you every green herb for meat. And it was so. And I saw that everything I had made, and behold, it was good. It was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. This is 2 verse 1 now. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Sorry, I'm actually reading to 2 verse 3. And on the seventh day I ended my work which I had made, and I rested on the seventh day from all the work which I had made. And I blessed the seventh day, and I sanctified it, because that in it I had rested from all the work that I had created and made. Just swapping the camera around quickly because now I want to walk. And so if you see that, the Lord, okay, up until Moses, the Sabbath wasn't kept. And so we know that the Lord must have told Moses about the Sabbath. And Moses went to the mount, and for 40 days and 40 nights, he spent time with the Lord there. And they just spent time in conversation and when Moses came down, his face radiated the glory of the Lord because he had been in contact with the Lord. Okay, Now I want to share a story of Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth had spent a season in prayer and he said when he was done, he was also upon the mountain, I think it was in Switzerland, and he said when he was done, he was filled with so much love of the Lord. And when he came down, he went to the train. When he got in the train, the people started saying, your face is shining. And that he convicted them of sin. And then they all started repenting because they were convicted of sin. And I believe the same thing must have happened with Moses because I believe he must have been filled with the love of the Lord and the purity and everything good that is from above. And so even when the Lord gave Moses the commandments, it would have been out of love and respect. So he would have said, if you love your neighbor, you won't kill him. You won't steal from him. You won't have an affair with his wife. You won't lie to him. It's the same to the Lord. Everything is right. out of love and respect. But that's a different one. So let's get back to this one. So the beauty of this message is that Moses spent time with the Lord in conversation. And I believe they must have chatted about everything. And Moses must have asked the Lord to tell him about the creation of the universe. And we know that God himself must have told Moses about the creation of the universe. Because up until then, the Sabbath day wasn't kept. Which is absolutely beautiful. Now, I live in Johannesburg. And I went through, today Saturday. And I, on Monday I went through for a meeting in Bloom, Bloemfontein. And there I took a wrong turn. I pressed start on my GPS slightly late and I went the way I thought I would have gone, which was the wrong way. <laughs> and then I turned down the wrong street completely. And there I drove past a guy who looked like he needed someone to talk to him. And I stopped and asked him, you know, are you all right? And he actually said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just praying, talking to Jesus. And we ended up speaking. And he ended up sharing how Okay, he was backslidden and then the Lord had called him again and he's listening now and how the Lord had been speaking to him, to him and telling and the Lord actually told him, go back to that street again and trust me and he's working on and telling him things that he's working on. And he said to him that he wants their relationship and their prayer, when he prays, he wants his prayer life to be conversational. And he wanted to be the same as what he had with Moses. And I didn't know this. And so he was just telling me about how the Lord wants him to have a personal relationship with him. And so I shared this story of Moses. And I told him how beautiful it is that Moses just sat down and chatted. He just sat down in the presence of the Lord and chatted. And then he must have asked him about the universe. And the Lord explained to him the creation of the universe. And then... You know when you tell someone and then, you know, the Lord has shown something and they got that, he got that laugh. And I said, what? He said, no, God is so good because I never knew it. So he told me that the Lord had told him that's how he wants their relationship to be. He wants his prayer life to be like that. And he wants it to be similar to Moses, you know, spend time in prayer. Just converse with me. It's just a, con it's just a conversation. 
And then he said, and then today you took a wrong turn, like away from home, and then a second wrong turn down, <laughs> you know, down the wrong street again. And then you ended up talking to me and you ended up telling me even what the conversation with Moses was about. I mean, how great is that? God is good. So I just wanted to share that um, just to help and to possibly motivate and encourage to spend more time in prayer. And that prayer is just a conversation. And it doesn't necessarily have to be us talking the whole time. You know, even if we listen to the Lord, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwell is a place of living. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So he who lives there. So you don't have to, you know, constantly repeat, uh, repeat this a phrase or whatever the case may be. Just think on the Lord and think on being in His presence and spending time with Him and sitting at His feet and chatting to Him. It's, it's absolutely lovely. And so even if you think about it, um, with the Jews, so this one is lovely as well. So same, same topic, sorry, one, one thought. They didn't know, the name of the Lord is so sacred to a Jew, and it should be to all of us, actually, but they're, they're so scared that if they say it, that it will be blasphemous, that they don't pronounce the Lord's name. And so, thus it makes sense when they ask Jesus, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray, because they didn't even know how to address the Lord. So how do we address the Lord? Because we can't even say His name. And so Jesus taught them, you address Him like as you say, Our Father, Abba, Our Father, who art in heaven. And then you're still hallowing his name. Hallowed be thy name. So by calling him Abba, Father, you're still hallowing his name, but you're addressing him. And you're addressing him as a loving father. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will being done is the Ten Commandments and love and respect as I touched on briefly as well. So let it be done on earth through us as it is in heaven. It's beautiful. So I'll stop there. Because I see it's quite long already. Oh, and I'm going to be sharing a couple of thoughts like this and things the Lord has shown me. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure you would have. And I hope it was meant for you. If it's not meant for you today, I'm sure it could be in the future or for someone else. Have a blessed day.